All right. Uh, all right. So um, firstly, I'm going to say I'm a, a, I have to confess I'm a bit nervous because usually when I do this kind of talk, the the crowd isn't technical. They are usually businessmen with ties, and and they are more afraid of me and than I am for them. So this is a different different uh, experience for me. Um, I'm going to talk about a bit about XMS2, and I'm going to first answer the first question that everybody asks me when uh, when I say that I'm with associated with XMS. They say, oh, "Are you still alive?" And the answer to that is, "Yeah, we are." Um, but as you know, this is our history, and most of you have probably tried or are using this player uh, even today. Um, it's one of the most popular music players for for Linux platform. And it wasn't written by me or my colleagues working on XMS2, but it was written by a guy called Peter Alm, and I'm working together with him. So when he quit the project, we took over. And the problem with the XMS player is it's messy code, and it's hard dependent on GTK1. And GTK1, as you all know, is pretty obsolete by now. So more or less, when we started to look at this, um, we heard this a lot. The XMS code we inherited is old and messy. In more specific terms, it's poorly structured, poorly documented, and littered with duplications. It's difficult to modify and extend one component of XMS uh, without breaking another. We spent most of our time fixing uh, that um, problems that were introduced for seemingly instant modifications. And this is a direct quote from BMP developers that forked XMS. And uh, I just want to say, if there are any BMP developers in here, I have a news flash for you. Uh, we know this. And uh, we're fixing this right now. So when we started to look at next generation player, we looked at the code base and realized we could go on and list all the problems of XMS1, and it would take us days. So there is no idea to be in that code base and work with that code base. Um, and I'm not here to talk about the flaws in XMS1, but rather what we've done in XMS2. So we all say goodbye to XMS1. And a lot of distributions have already done this, Gen2 and Slackware. And in which century now, probably Debian will also say goodbye to it. Um, so um, the start of the new XMS player, XMS2, was actually done in January 2003. And this is quite, quite some years ago. And as you can see by this graph we borrowed from Olo, uh, we have developed sub, uh, a substantial ma lot of code. Um, so what is this code? When we started to look what to include and how to build XMS2 with all the imagery of XMS1 still in our heads, we realized that some things couldn't be done in the current code base, and these things that we see here, our buzzword bingo for music players today, those things, we got to have them. We got to have media lib, uh, cross-platform, sexy interfaces, everything like that. All these things we need to comply with. Um, and we also learned a very important history, lesson from XMS1. We don't want to be hard dependent on our widget set. Because as we saw with XMS1, that it got obsolete when, we, when everybody moved to GTK2. We don't want to make the same mistake when everybody moves to GTK3 or whatever. So we have pretty hard competition. Uh, you probably use or seen or migrated to players like Amarok, BMPX, uh, Rhythmbox, even someone using a singing bird. Uh, and then, of course, we have XMS2. It looks like this. <laughs> and that was the whole, <laughs> the whole room going, what the fuck? working for, for so many years, and still this is the only thing you can show. This is the best you can show. Well, the, the truth is that XMS2 is everything we talked about, but also something else. We are more like a music framework. And this is where the uh, boring diagrams come in in my presentation. 
what we learned was to not be hard dependent, not build in everything into the uh, widget code, but rather separate, make abstractions, make it easier to extend, extend and so on. So we have a client-server model where the client is the thing you see on your screen, and the server running in the background doing all the boring work for you, decoding data, outputting it on the audio device, reading the metadata, um, doing searches, everything that you need. And on top of this, you have an API. And uh, we have bindings for most animals and stones and coffee there is for you to build your favorite client, how you want it to look. And building a XMS client, this is the most simple client you can build. And this is done in Ruby, so I have no idea what this does because I don't know Ruby. Uh, but as you see, making a client in XMS2 with the API we have defined is very easy. You have a very powerful API to work with. And this gives us the choice of having multiple clients. If you like the GNOME or you like the trolls, you can choose. And you will be able to access the same power that we have built in, in the server. Um, also, one thing that we talk about often is that everything is a client. Um, for example, last FM support, scrobbling. This is not built into the server. It's actually a client running, looking at whatever things are playing right now and post it to last FM. So this is a client. Uh, Growl support that we don't really actually have, but we could have, is also a client. Uh, album art support, uh, downloading album art, is also a client. Syncing your iPod is also a client. And of course, we don't have any of those things, but, uh, but we could have. <laughs> um, so we have a very, very nice CLI. And this is the perfect client for XMS2. Uh, it does everything you, you want it to. You can search, you can add, you can hop forward, and you can stop, and whatever. And I see on all of you, you, you making this, this, this face again. Yes, we do have graphical clients. Um, the problem we have is that we have too much choice. So we have too many graphical clients, and none of them are very good. So we have a Qt client, we have GTK clients, we have big clients, we have small clients, we have huge clients, and we also have odd clients, like this one, running Java on a phone, connecting to the server, and you're controlling your music. So there is a lot of different ways and clients you can use in XMS2 with the API. And what I'm really here to say, and I've, I've read this tutorial on how to make a lightning talk, is get to the point. Because you'd only have 15 minutes, so get to the point. And I'm getting to the point right now. Uh, we have a very, very good code base. We have a very, very nice API. We have bindings for most languages you use in here. But we still are missing uh, the kick-ass client. So if you're sitting here, and you're an expert on making cool UIs, you should really, really talk to us. Um, you can find more information on our webpage or join Freenode, the XMS2 channel, and also find the guys with the night nice t-shirt that says XMS2 or something else. Um, and that's it. Questions? So, talking about frequent questions. Uh, the question is, do you have a client that looks exactly like XMS1? Uh, yes, we do. We do have a client. Uh, it's written in Qt instead uh, of GTK that emulates the skin layer. It sucks really, really bad, uh, but it could definitely be there. Yes. More questions? Yep. What, what do you say? We tried. Oh, we tried. And they say, you're arrogant shitholes. And we say, we're not. 
No, uh, we, we would love, love to do that. We haven't found anyone preparing to do that because people are p apparently like to have nightmares about PCM data and media info. Yeah, good, good point. Uh, yeah. Um, we do have a collaboration with MPD project, which is kind of like XMS2, except that it is a subset of XMS2. So what we have done is that we implemented a bridge that translates MPD protocol to XMS2 protocol, for example. So you can use MPD clients with the XMS2 backend. More questions? What would be the ultimate client? Um, I think ultimate clients are different for, for different people. I think that your, your view of an ultimate client is very different from my view of an ultimate cl client. And that's why we built the framework in the API. What we do miss is a client that we can go to the masses with and say, this is our, our standard front end that you can use to, you know, do, to showcase all the functionality of the server. And that we still miss. Uh, other things, of course, there is a lot of nice things. I mean, I, I would love to see someone here write a client that, that synchronizes with an iPod or something like that. But what we really miss is the showcase client that really shows all the functionality for, of the XMS2 server. Yep. Uh, we Actually, we were one of the first projects using Dbus. Uh, the question was, what do you use for IPC? And we were one of the first projects using IPC, uh, Dbus as a peer-to-peer -peer IPC. Um, but it ended up with Havoc, Havoc, the maintainer of Dbus, saying that what you do, no one has ever done with Dbus, and no one will ever do it with Dbus. So we had to stop using Dbus. Uh, and right now, we have our own written XMS IPC to abstract that. And it's highly portable, and that's, I didn't have that in my talk, I should have that in my talk. The client lib is 100% pure C without any dependencies. And we have it running on, you saw mobile phones, NH100, uh, all the different kinds of platforms you can think about. We, we even have it ported for, to Windows. We had a poor guy sticking out with Windows for too long to just do that. So. XMS IPC is very, very, very small client lib to just send messages. I think we have time for one more question. Okay, thank you very much.